Hello everyone. Uh, as part of learning big data with Hadoop and Spark, by this time we have learnt that data will be spread across a network and processing is also happening on a network. So we learnt the concepts of HDFS which was the which is the storage component and MapReduce which is the distributed processing component. As part of this learning, let us try to learn two more important topics, data integrity and data compression. What exactly is data integrity? Whenever we are working with HDFS, uh, I have so many options for data I.O. Say for example, uh, we can write contents into a new file which we call as the output operation and we have the option to read data from the file also which we call as data input operation. So Hadoop has built in primitives for both I.O. operations. When I, when I am working with I.O. operations, uh, it is uh, the expectation from the user that the data is always correct and it is not corrupted during transmission over a network. We know because HDFS works on a distributed system, data, data gets transferred from one system to the other system or one node to the other node. During this transmission phase, we want to make sure the data is not corrupted that is integrity issues. So, let us talk in detail about how data integrity is taken care or what are the issues related to data integrity. So, the users of Hadoop, they expect no data is lost or corrupted. However, whenever we are trying to work with IO operations, it works, it happens on a network. So, this might carry uh, minor chances of uh, introducing errors into the data. So, when we are working with big data, these chances are even more. So, how do we detect the uh, occurrence of corrupted data? How do we check whether the data is correct or corrupt, right? So, the one way is to calculate the checksum. Checksum is a process which will try to correct, uh, which will try to calculate a specific value for every block of data we are trying to store. And whenever we are transmitting the data across a channel which is unreliable, we want to check whether this checksum is matching or not. So, we are trying to work with calculation of checksum during the first time the data is entering into the system and whenever you are transmitting the data from one system to the other system, both at the time of writing the file for the first time and whenever it is read, both the times we are trying to calculate the checksum. The data which is deemed to be correct if the newly generated checksum does not match with already existing checksum. What does this mean? First time when I am writing my file into the system, I we try to calculate the default primitives are there which automatically calculate the checksum and they try to store it in the system. And subsequent read operations, once we write the file, we keep on reading the contents. So, the subsequent read operations, they also try to calculate the checksum value. That calculated checksum is compared with the existing checksum. If both of them are matching, the data is correct. If there is a mismatch, we identify, we detect something happened to the data, the data is not correct. There are chances the checksum itself is corrupted, right? The data is intact, there is no harm to the data, but the checksum got garbled. But this is a very minor chance, so let us not discuss on that. We will be talking the situation where the data might get corrupted and how do we take care of that. And whenever we are working with HDFS, it commonly uses the CRC 32 bit. 32 bit is a 4 byte when we talk about. So, cyclic redundancy check, this is one of the method to calculate checksum, which computes a 32 bit integer checksum and for an input of any size. And sometimes HDFS uses a more efficient variant of that CRC32C. This is a variant of the same algorithm. 
HDFS is calculating all these checksums without knowledge to the user. The user does not feel an extra work of calculating, storing all these things. HDFS is doing it on behalf of the user without giving any notice to him. So, HDFS transparently calculates all these checksums and it also does the default verification whenever you are trying to read the data. And a separate checksum is calculated for uh, a chunk of the data. The chunk size will be by default 512 bytes and if we want, we can change the chunk size also. So, how are we creating the default uh, property is DFS dot bytes per checksum. This is the property which will be there in the configuration file. The default size for bytes per checksum value is 512 bytes which can be configured as per the requirement of the user. And data nodes are responsible for verifying the data they receive before storing the data and its checksum. What do we mean by this? First time when we are writing the file, we try to just type and say save my file. Now name node identifies first data node and it also creates a pipeline depending on the replication factor. Say for example, the default replication factor is 3, the name node whenever it wants to store the file, it identifies 3 data nodes and puts them in the pipeline. So, the data nodes when they are first time receiving the file, first time the file is getting saved, that time they have to uh, store and they are trying to put the checksum also along with the block of the data. This applies to the data that they are receiving from the clients and also they might receive data from other data nodes. When does this happen? Suppose I am a client, I am sitting on data node A. Right, right now I am typing a file and I am trying to store it. So, the data is received from the client to the data node. This time also the checksum is verified. During replication, all the other data nodes which are on the pipeline, they receive from their previous node, predecessor node. So, in such case, data is getting transferred between two data nodes. That time also they have to verify the checksum. So, the last node in the pipeline verifies the checksum and if it identifies any errors or mismatch with the checksum, what it does? It receives a subclass of IO exception and which will be handled in application specific manner. So, each node is verifying the checksum whenever it is receiving data and it also informs if at all there is a checksum mismatch, it is throwing an exception because Hadoop is totally based on Java, we have to work with exception handling. Right? So, it throws a subclass of the IO exception and when the clients are trying to read data from the data nodes. So, the first part is when we are trying to write the file. The second part when clients are trying to read from the data nodes, again checksum is verified comparing them with the ones which are stored at the data node. So, every data node will have a copy of the data block and whenever the user is trying to read data from the file which is stored at a specific data node, that data node contains the block plus the corresponding checksum. Now, the read operation will again calculate the checksum. The checksum which is calculated and which is already there for that particular block, both are compared. If there is a match, read operation proceeds successfully. If there is a mismatch, what happens? It tells the uh, name node, the data node informs uh, name node that so and so data node I have tried reading and I am getting a mismatch of the checksum, right? We will see what the name node does. But before that, whenever the checksum is matching the data node, along with the first time calculated checksum, it maintains a log of successful checksum matchings. So, every time you are trying to read, the log gets updated. And in addition to block verification on client reads, what is the data node doing? It runs a background process. 
that background process is called as data block scanner. What does this data block scanner does? It is a background process which periodically checks for whether every data block is correct or not. This is done to take care uh, of the data getting corrupted because of bit rot. What is bit rot? We also call it as bit decay. Bit rot due to time passage, the data which is recorded on these electronic media devices like our storage mediums that uh, the impact that is given, the electromagnetic impact which is recorded on the storage media might get decay. The intensity of the spot might get decay and you may not able to read the data properly. So, we call it as bit rot or bit decay. So, in order to decay, in order to take care of those things, it runs a background process called as data block scanner. Now, how do we correct a data block which is already corrupted, right? I want to read the data, I identified the checksum is not matching which is there already on the data block. So, how do we take care of this? Because HDFS stores replicas of blocks, it can heal corrupted blocks by copying one of the good replicas to produce a new uncorrupted replica. This is the one of the reasons why HDFS maintains replication because of which we are getting high availability, right? For every block we will have three replications. In such cases what it is doing is if at all a particular client application reports there is a mismatch of checksum and the data block got corrupted. In such case the name node takes this information. How does the name node know? The client application is throwing an exception. So, the name node takes that exception and it will try to mark this particular data node is having a corrupted block. In such cases what will happen? Further read requests will never be directed to this corrupted data node. So, this is one thing and name node will try to find out one more data node and gets a replication in that place just to maintain the replication factor is intact, right? And once I have my replication is also done, the corrupted data node, the block whichever is there on the data node will be deleted, right? And suppose I do not want to work with checksums, I do not want to verify the checksums whether the data is corrupted or not, I do not want to do that. That can be disabled, set verify checksum, this there is a method on the system, set verify checksum method and the value can be set to false. The moment we set to false, it will not look for cal calculating the checksums, verifying them, all these things. Now, Whenever we are working with the local file system, the Hadoop local file system is also doing client side checksum calculations. What do we mean by this? Whenever we are trying to see this example, whenever we are trying to write a file called sample, the file system along with storing this file, it also stores in the same drive, same directory, one more file which is hidden from the user. The file will have dot sample dot crc, right? Now, what is the original file the user is trying to store? Sample. What the file system is trying to create along with the original file? Dot sample. So, the name of the file matches with this dot crc. crc stands for cyclic redundancy check. So, whenever the local file system is calculating the checksum, it creates a file with same name as the original file with an extension dot crc. And the chunk size can be controlled by a property in the configuration file, file dot bytes per checksum property. The default size will be 512 bytes which can be configured as per the user's choice. Now, if I change it from 512 bytes to 1024, will there be any requirement for modifying the application program? Not needed. Where are we making the changes? In the configuration file. So, the application program automatically edges itself and it does the rest of the things. 
and checksums are verified whenever we are trying to read a file and if at all it detects any mismatch of checksum, it throws checksum exception. And how much computation time does they need? In Java, they are almost like native code. So, we are going with uh, doing the checksum calculations uh, in order to have data integrity. And if an error is detected by the checksum file system when it is reading, what it will do? It will call report checksum failure method and what is the default implementation? The default implementation does nothing and what it will do is it will move the file which is identified with a mismatch of checksum and it will be kept into a drive called as bad files and administrators should periodically check this folder and they have to do uh, like correcting the files, taking care of replication, restoration and removing the file which is already removing the block which is corrupted at a specific data node. This is all about data integrity. I will continue about data compression in the next video.